Carmelo Anthony is a crucial part of the Blazers team as he brings leadership and veteran experience. And I don't think I'm the only one who finds it crazy that he was a free agent and out of the league just a few seasons back. He had a lot of doubters and people calling him washed, but the truth is he wasn't in the same position as he was in his prime. The last time Melo was given a position to excel and be the man on the team, he was an all-star. But as soon as he went to OKC and had to share the floor with Paul George and Russell Westbrook, people somehow forgot about his all-star appearance that last season, and it only got worse when he went to Houston. But I'm not here to talk about that. As you can tell by the title, I want to see how good a prime Carmelo Anthony was. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, let's just establish where I think his prime was. I personally think there were two stages of Melo's prime. The first being his early prime in Denver and then his peak which happened in New York. So let's look at his prime years in Denver. This took place from 2008 to 2010. However, I will say that I find his Denver career odd as he's been very good ever since he came to the league as he averaged nearly 30 in his fourth season, but he would have dips and highs. But I will explain why 2008 was the start of his prime in my opinion. In the 2008-2009 season, Melo averaged 23 points, 7 rebounds and 3 assists on 44, 37 and 79 shooting splits. He made the All-NBA third team and led the Nuggets to the second seed in the West. The reason I believe Melo's prime started here was because he made it to the Western Conference Finals. Before this, he was stuck in the first round, but he only lost to Kobe's Lakers and Tim Duncan's Spurs in those first round exits, so it's not like he lost to bad teams. So Melo makes the Western Conference Finals, why is that the start of his prime? Well it's because of what he did in that series. He faced off against the prime Kobe Bryant who averaged 35 that series, and Melo didn't back down. Melo actually rose to the occasion and averaged nearly 27 points, 5 rebounds and 4 assists. He was also stepping up his defence as well, averaging a steal per game and fighting for stops. This series, Melo really proved how good he was. Oh, and did I mention he was only 24 years old? Moving on to his 2009-2010 season, Melo moved up to the All-NBA second team after averaging 28 points, 6 rebounds and 3 assists on 45, 31 and 83 shooting splits. Melo earned his third All-Star appearance of his career, but unfortunately he didn't make any noise in the playoffs, losing to the Jazz in the first round. That wraps up his early prime and now we move on to the next stage of his career, his time with the Knicks. Melo was traded from Denver early into the 2010-2011 season. In his time with the Knicks that season, he averaged 26 points, 7 rebounds and 3 assists. The only other player in the league at the time to average those numbers or better was LeBron James. And if you compare both of their stats for that season, you can see that Melo is roughly on par in most categories besides assists. That shows you how good Melo was in just his first season in New York. He was an all-star, but unfortunately didn't make an all-NBA team. Melo would lose in the first round of the playoffs to the Boston Celtics, but don't let that distract you from the fact that he averaged 26 points, 10 rebounds and 5 assists that series. He led both teams in points per game and was second in rebounds per game, only behind Kevin Garnett. The next season, Melo averaged 22 points, 6 rebounds and 4 assists. This was a down season for him in New York, but despite that he was still an all-star and made the All-NBA third team. He was again eliminated in the first round of the playoffs by LeBron's Heat, but he still rose to the occasion, averaging 27.8 points, which is tied first with LeBron for that series, and also averaged 8 rebounds and had a 41 point performance in Game 4. In the 2012-2013 season, Melo really took off. He led the league in scoring by averaging 28.7 points with 7 rebounds and 2 assists. He led the Knicks to the second seed, which was a massive difference compared to last season, as the Knicks finished 7th. He came third in MVP voting and was one of only three players to average 25 or more points, six or more rebounds and two or more assists. The other two players were Kevin Durant and LeBron James, who were also the only players ahead of him in MVP voting. Melo made the All-NBA second team and was an All-Star. He was on a mission in the playoffs and averaged nearly 30 in the first round against the Celtics. He unfortunately would lose in the second round to the Paul George-led Pacers team, but still averaged 28 points and eight assists. The next season was horrible for the Knicks. They didn't even make the playoffs, despite Melo averaging 27 and 8. He was still an all-star but didn't make an all-NBA team. And honestly, that's where Melo's prime ends. He never made the playoffs with the Knicks after 2013, but he was still averaging 24 points per game. Melo's individual performance gradually started to decline after 2013, but he wasn't a bad player. But let's take a look back at his prime and see where he really excelled. 
From his final All-Star appearance in Denver in 2010 until 2013, Melo averaged 26 points, 7 rebounds and 3 assists. Something I haven't mentioned yet is his clutch gene too. Melo has hit many game winners, not just in his prime, but throughout his entire career. Since the 2003 to 2004 season, which was his rookie season, he has hit the most shots in the last 30 seconds of the game for the lead. That's more than LeBron, more than Kobe, more than Dirk, more than anybody. He has hit 26 of those shots. He is just pure clutch. So overall, what do I think of Carmelo Anthony's prime? Well, firstly, before I say anything, I will just say that Melo was an elite player before the 2008 season, where I said his prime started. He averaged the most points of his career before this quote-unquote prime and also made two All-Star games and two All-NBA third teams. I said 2008 was the start of his prime because he started to become more of a top-tier player in the league. But what do I think? Well, overall, Carmelo is one of the best scorers of his generation and possibly of all time. He had no trouble putting the ball in the basket, although his efficiency was not amazing. You can't compare Melo's numbers to a player like LeBron for two reasons. Firstly, Melo was closer to a Kobe-esque player with a scoring ability, the way he wasn't much of a playmaker as well. The second thing is the way he scored the ball. If you take a look at his career shot chart, you can see that Melo was a very high volume mid-range scorer and three-point scorer. This explains his not so efficient numbers. Melo wasn't much of a lockdown defender throughout his career, but that's really the only negative. He hasn't won a championship because he played in the West when Kobe and Tim Duncan were dominating. And when he went East, he faced LeBron, specifically the Miami Super Team that was there at the peak of Melo's career. But that's just what I think. If you think differently or agree with me, please let me know in the comments below. That's going to wrap it up for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And if you did, a like and subscribe would help me out massively. That's all from me and I'll see you in the next one.